guys that have a little bit more knowledge of what's going on in the beach, why the seals are here, what they're doing, uh, and explain about a little bit about the seal's lifestyle, if you will, uh, and provide just a little bit more education. Uh, awareness always helps with preservation and conservation. Uh, we are also a set of eyes that likes to preserve, if you will, or to help uh, protect uh, the environment. This is a unique place. You're at the Piedras Blancas Elephant Seal Rookery. This is the largest mainland elephant seal rookery in the world, home to about 25,000 elephant seals. But that's a bit misleading because the elephant seals actually live in the ocean. They don't live here. They do come ashore twice a year, and when they come ashore, all depends on their gender and their age uh, and where they are in their life cycle. So what we're going to see today is a bit of a change of the guard, if you will, or the transition between two happenings, two things that are going on on the beach. We'll talk a little bit more about that. With respect to visitor management, if you will, <laughs> we're more reactionary than we are management. Uh, we just ask visitors to adhere to a, some very simple rules. We're a no drone zone. Uh, the drones do disturb the seals, uh, and uh, we, don't, we don't want to upset the seals. It is a federal crime to uh, interfere with marine mammals, so we try to protect them. And um, uh, she can speak a little bit more to that because she also works with uh, another organization here on the coast that helps protect marine mammals. Um, it's a no smoking zone. Um, there's no uh, visitors are allowed over the fences and down on the beach. Uh, this is my starting my third season out here now and I have never seen anybody try and scale the fence. <laughs> I've seen people do some inappropriate things like throwing pebbles and things like that. And you try and just you know, bring them up to speed in terms of why that's not a very good idea. The one place we do end up in management is during the breeding season, um, which starts in, in December, breeding and, and birthing, um, down at uh, my San Simeon Pier, all the males that get beat up or just can't get in here because they're not bad enough, we go down there, you know, some years there's a lot, some years there's not so many, but they go down there just to recover. And that's a public beach. And so we have people there to keep because it'll be sometimes I when I was first started three years ago, I'm three years also. You know, when you, you know, there was like 15 or 16 on that beach in a stretch of about a mile, and uh, some years there's only four or five or even less, you know, one day on a given day. But but on um, you have people that try to go touch them, we've had to like stop people from walking right up to them. And the thing that amazes me the most is people that bring little children within 10 feet of a big elephant seal. I think it's kind of cool try to get pictures <laughs> these are wild animals that yeah. can weigh up to 5,000 yeah. pounds that just lost the opportunity yeah. to mate for the rest of the season <laughs> they are not in a good yeah, mood they're, not. <laughs> they're just laying there they're just laying there and they're not like all aggressive and sometimes people don't even realize like there's a lot of rocks there too and you can be walking along there and not even know that there's an elephant seal laying five feet from you as you walk upon it you know because it just they blend right in with the terrain and parts of the beach and so yeah. they look like rocks. I you actually know. work on her speech. That's my winter. Yeah, I did. I've done it too, but not yeah. recently. So we tend to um, build, get ravager, gather driftwood, and we make huge kind yeah. of corrals yeah. to delineate because people literally don't see them. It's yeah. the funniest thing is because they and they don't realize that if you have one male that's coming in from the water, he's lost in battle, and you've got one up here on the beach. Their testosterone. Still in a fighting mood, and to try to explain to people that you do not want to be between two males, they're not going to attack you, they're just going to go over the top of your time. And dogs, etc. So, we really spend a lot of time. Some days it's kind of crowded there, too. Yes, With people on Sundays, you know, yeah. it's a nice day, there'll be a lot of people there. Yeah. And they're just laying back in their chairs and they're sitting right in their elephant seat sometimes. It's crazy. Have there been cases of people getting hurt by elephant seat? Um, before I started there, there is a, quite a story about um, there's a creek that runs right into that beach area, and there was a large elephant seal in the creek. And a gentleman put up his pop up tent, and he had his coolers and everything, and the docents tried to say, really not a great place, really, really shouldn't. And he was like defiant, this is my beach. And sure enough, another seal was coming in from the water, and this one came right through, just smashed everything. You know, and then the guy was like, well, who's going to pay for it? 
<laughs> Elephant seals are big believers in geometry, shortest distance between two points. <laughs> if you're in the middle of that, okay, it will go over the top of you. That's an important thing to remember because when the big bulls are on the beach, they're here for one reason and one reason only. If you ever wanted to accuse a guy of having one thing on his mind, it's these guys. Uh, and unfortunately, during birthing season, when the big males are here also, they're waiting for the females to come into estrus so they can mate. They're fighting amongst themselves, they're chasing females that are ready to mate, and these pups, when they're born, are somewhere between about 50 and 75 pounds, although they're going to grow quickly. Uh, during those initial days, they're very small and they're very, very vulnerable. A 5,000-pound male goes over the top of a 75-pound pup. Uh, you know, the pup doesn't stand much of a chance. But to get back to your question about you know how much do we do in terms of, of management, we do have some resources that we can help assist. We're here for interpretation purposes and to help visitors understand what they're seeing and behave appropriately. If they don't like to take the advice from us, which is free. <laughs> they can bring in the state park rangers who will give it to them. It's a bit of a heftier price if they do that. Uh, we also have some other resources. But I would say overall, from my experience, and these guys are great, um, I've had 99.95% good behavior by the visitors. Uh, once in a while, somebody will be smoking and you know, they, they don't even realize it. I'm right. sure that here, but not down there. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and you guys established this place, right, because in 97, they, they started coming down here and they started being animals up on the freeway and, and or highway and various things. And so this, was, this, this whole place is a response to trying to have a better experience and safer experience for people and the animals. Yeah, ever. some of those stories, like the report of my demise, have been slightly exaggerated, <laughs> quote somebody. Um, so, they, I mean, yes, the, the seals were coming up onto the beaches, and before there was fences and parking lots and all that, they would roam around freely and go wherever they choose, because seals tend to do that. Uh, were there a lot of them up on the highway? Probably. probably. Right, but, right. But they were running. I thought maybe what we would do, uh, if this is okay with you guys, maybe I was going to run you through sort of the story of, of this, the elephant seal annual cycle, give you an idea of what's going on, and then what maybe what you're seeing on the beach will make a little bit more sense. Cool. So just give me... Give,